This is still tea time on Plus TV Africa. Um, to join us to have conversation regarding the fashion industry and how they are coping this period is, I don't know if I'm supposed to use the word veteran for <laughs> a fashion designer, but that's what I choose to use, Ade Bakari. Thank you. Thank you for Thanks joining for us again. Me. Yes, Thank good you. to have you. Yes, mm -hmm. good to be back. How okay. has the lockdown been and everything? Uh, it's been interesting. Um, actually got caught up, was meant to be back in London but I'm in Nigeria and because uh, I was meant to be on my way to Cameroon for a show and that got cancelled the day we were meant to fly out so uh, we had to stay put in Nigeria and, but it's been interesting. Mm. Yeah. How interesting. so? Uh, because we were sort of approached um, by um, Lagos State, um, Mascop Lagos uh, by the special advisor to, to the governor, um, Shalak Behamad, who's the special advisor on sustainable development, yes. about um, volunteering to make masks for the public. Because um, Lagos State had said that everybody has to wear a mask mm. if, if you're in public. And um, so it's like getting designers together, manufacturers, so they can produce a lot of masks and, and give to the public and mm. you know voluntary voluntary mm. yeah. voluntarily yeah. yeah absolutely voluntarily yes. even so, from you as well well yes i mean for our private clients they they, they do pay but the lagos government isn't paying anything no no okay. they're not paying and then, and then we give them i mean they, there's no directive on who you must give them to but you you give them to people who you feel would need them, the lower income bracket So people. are people like you leveraging this voluntary work? Because I mean, it's the government anyway. Mm. So are you leveraging it in terms of, say, having a tax break or mm. something? I, I just think it's more like a social responsibility. Mm. Okay. And it's um, the cost of producing masks are not that sort of high. Mm. And, you know, you just produce what you can and give to whom you can. Mm. It just, you know, to help people in general. Right. So what we do is that we produce a minimum of like um, 100 every um, week to give out right. to, to people. Mm. And, so how, okay, go ahead. <laughs> and how do you, what was the process like in terms of getting it to the grassroots? Because we've always struggled with implementation on the side of the world. So, so what yes. does that look like for you so guys? We, we've got, because we actually also produce here in Nigeria manufacture, uh, a long time ago, I, I just realized it's a bit more financially sort of um, better to, to manufacture here. Mm. So the, so the, the ready-to-wear in Nigeria is produced here, although the couture is produced in England. But because of that, I've got a manufacturing setup. Right. And so we've got tailors and I use patterns. And so um, I was able to bring in some of the tailors to work on this project. Mm. Um, actually, it's 100 a day, not 100 a week. I, I, right. I mix it up. So um, I... I didn't bring in a lot of them because of the social distance and okay. one has to be careful because they use public transport. Mm. But um, so I got um, a certain amount in and, and they... Are they volunteering as well? No, I've got to pay, to pay them. them. Yes. Right. Okay, so it's interesting to know that there is no leverage in this situation, <laughs> but I'll let that go. Uh, so <laughs> in general, how yeah. would you say the um, um, pandemic is affecting fashion designers in Nigeria? Well, I think one has to be creative in times like this. So, uh, and I've see that a lot of designers are being creative, you know, posting things at home, making masks, um, doing lounger, which we, we're also doing, um, because, you know, you have to think, okay, people are not going to be going out as much, but they will still sort of want to wear clothes, mm. especially Nigerians who are very fashionable. Mm. And so, you know, you have to think of what they would wear at home. So a lot of designers are producing things that, mm. you know, people could wear at home. Um, I, I know fashion, I'm mean, going just say clothes in general, let me mm. avoid the word fashion for this question, but clothes in general are very tied to the pandemic we have at hand in terms of it being protective and all of that stuff. Mm. And you hear people mentioning how, you know, we're never going back to that normal. So going mm. forward, I'm, I'm sure there will be an involvement, like and you see a sense of evolving in the industry where the fashion is changing and all that type of stuff. Do you have any idea of how your style or like the make of clothes, maybe for Adi Bakari as a brand and just the fashion industry in general is going to mm. look like? Um, I think there's a lot of um, uncertainty and I, I've been catching up on a lot of talks and, and seminars across the world and everything. They, they, it, it will change, but it won't change drastically. Mm. Once, once the pandemic has um, declined, life will resume. 
because human beings are very resilient, especially Nigerians, and they want yeah. to get back to living you know, their lives. Yeah. So they, but people will be more cautious. So what you'd find is that I think the parties would still happen. People would still go for Legal concerts and things would. like that. <laughs> yes, but people would just be more cautious in, in terms of the fact that maybe they might have to sanitize their hands before they enter the event. Mm. And, you know, people would be slightly cautious in the sense that if they've got a temperature, they try to check themselves. Generally, that's what I feel. Mm. I don't think life is going to grind to a halt. And you don't you think know. that the fact, like maybe you start seeing clothes coming with gloves, for example, or like... No. Okay, okay. Yeah. let's look at the sensitivity of people now. I yes. think that's one of the areas you are going through yeah. with that question. Mm. Um, we've seen someone like um, Tacha, that's what yeah. they call her, right? The big brother Ninja ex-housemate say mm. being uncomfortable, that's basically how I put it, mm. with seeing... Um, the max now becoming a fashion gear, not um, and for her, it, it feels like the aim for wearing the max is not at the forefront. For some, it's becoming oh, I'm wearing this color of max, like and then it has to. So, what do you think about that? I mean, human beings are dynamic, and mm -hmm. so you will always get um, different takes on, on on people with the mask. We even have clients who who are calling and saying, oh, we want you to design a mask that would stand out, you know, and that they want something very fashionable. Mm -hmm. And of course, they're coming to me, a creature designer, so they want something fabulous. And I'm saying, well, the, the major reason for the mask is more protective. Mm. But of course, because we're designers and we can come up with um, beautiful ideas. And yes, people would want to mm -hmm. be a bit more unique. You know, because it's like the world is quite predestined in the sense that everybody tends to follow everyone else. But at times, there are people who like to stand out. Mm. So yes, of course, there are some people who would want maybe a mask and have Soraska crystals <laughs> all over it. But provided okay. you obey the rules yeah, but of what the mask is. Yeah, but talking about protection, is, is, yes. is there a particular type of material mm. that should be used for it to be at least effective to mm. a certain Well, I, ideally, there's the mask called the N95. Mm -hmm. Uh, which is like a surgical mask, mm -hmm. but that I mean the, the, they can't cope with the demand. Yeah, that's why in, in for the, world. the cloth production yes. now is there a particular type of so, material. So, so that's why um, most countries have said people should make their mask and using natural fibers, so, which is like a hundred percent cotton mm -hmm. or, or linen or silk, because these are natural mm -hmm. fibers mm -hmm. as opposed to like polyester or mm -hmm. acetate. And and it's sad because a lot of what you see now in Nigeria are people like using. Ankara, mm. mask, which is wrong because oh. that Ankara might not be 100% cotton. Right. They might, especially the ones that they sell five yards for 1,000, mm. that's definitely not 100% cotton. Okay. So that's dangerous in the sense that you won't be able to breathe properly. Mm. You become uncomfortable and then, you know, you could start getting drowsy. So, so the effectiveness lies in using 100% yes, cotton. Yes, natural fibers and for it to be a double layered mask okay, and right. to cover the nose and the mouth. Okay. And then you, you're to, to wash them mm. after every use every day I mean yeah so so basically like we supply 10 on sort of minimum to our clients and so they can wash them because they're hundred percent natural fibers mm. and then you know you wash and then you use another one mm. and that's how you're to use a mask mm. okay mm. okay right. so you don't think in any way that um, thinking more fashion would take away the fight or take away something from the fight against the virus that, that, so, sorry, uh, is I mean, it? Like, in terms Someone of calling in to say, oh, yeah. I want this, I want that. Do you think, or should, should Oh, yes, I mean... Yeah. Because we've seen a lot of Ankara masks yes. now, yeah. yes. and you're just saying that if That's it's... wrong. It's, yeah. It is wrong. I mean, except maybe it's... Um, one of those 100% um, cotton it, I'm sure like that is, or, is there, or is there a way where it could be protective but still very fashionable? Mm -hmm. Oh, definitely. Right. Definitely. And you're going to see a lot of that. Mm. You're going to see a lot of fashionable masks. But the, ma the major principle is that you obey the usage Question. of the mask and, right. and make sure that it's effective. Mm. So, yes, you can make it beautiful and colorful, oh, yeah. but it has to be effective. And it has to be um, a natural fiber. Mm. So, you know, the natural fibers are like wool, linen, cotton. Mm. silk those are things that are grown naturally mm. because that's what makes you breathe properly whereas the man-made like the acetates and the polyesters which are produced by a man <laughs> made from um, chemical products those are not very breathable okay is yeah. there something you're working on you want to share with us i mean it's a lockdown and you probably <laughs> have more time to yes yeah, so we're working in. on the loungewear okay and uh, so it's something that um, clients can wear at home 
you can wear at home. It's like it's relaxing, but at the same time, it's it's beautiful because one thing with people who who are fashionable, even if they're on their own, they will they you know they would still like to sort of Look dress nice. up. Yes, mm. it's an innate thing to be fashionable. You should call it the quarantine sleigh. The quarantine sleigh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for thank doing you. tea time with us right now. Pleasure. Okay, and that's how I wrap up this episode of Tea Time. Thank you for watching, and of course, you can join the conversation on social media with the hashtag Tea Time or Twitter to us at Plus TV Africa. Remember, you can catch up on this conversation by visiting our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa. My thank you, as always, you go to my co-anchors. Um, if you felt sure I had to step down because of our social distancing, so yeah, thank you for being doing the first um, segment with us, and of course, if you felt my and Adi Bakari for doing this as well. My name is Elsie Godwin saying do stay home, stay safe, and enjoy your day.